Hey guys, Blazin here. Welcome to my analysis on the T25C. Much like the plasma rifle, the spiker is not featured in Halo Reach's competitive matchmaking, so back to firefight I go. The T25C, which stands for Type 25 Carbine, is a common brute firearm used during the Human Covenant War. However, unlike most Covenant weapons, which tend to be made by Iru Iru Armory, this model is made by Pegasus Workshop, which is a brute dedicated manufacturer. The T25C was first encountered by brute forces during the initial skirmishes on Harvest in 2525, and will remain a staple weapon of the brutes throughout the Human Covenant War. The T25C was detested by the elites due to its primitive origins, but the weapon was allowed to be serviced in low numbers. Despite this, however, it would be rarely employed by frontline Covenant infantry during the war. The weapon will be employed by brute forces during the Siege of New Alexandria and the Battle of Azad during the Fall of Reach. The T-25C is an automatic projectile weapon and has seen very little iteration since it was first designed and implemented during pre-Covenant conflicts on Doisak, which is the brute's homeworld. In the Covenant arsenal, it is one of the weapons most resembling those developed and employed by humanity firing a solid metal spike as opposed to plasma. The carbine fires long, sharp spikes made of superheated tungsten alloy. The spike ammunition is coated with pyrophoric compound unique to Doisac, though the weapon's origins on the brute homeworld obfuscate any further attempts to ascertain the composition of the weapon. When fired, the coating burns with the white-hot intensity once exposed to atmospheric oxygen, rendering the spikes superheated and semi-molten. The spikes thus glow with a yellow-white light for a short time after impact before they cool. Like all brute weaponry, the T25C has no safety and once the magazine is loaded, the weapon is ready to fire. The spikes, once fired, are longer than the magazine, implying that the firing process possibly stretches the projectile in some manner. When employed, the T25C is noted to have a distinct smell of burnt hair, with a telltale sign of their use in a firefight being the smell of barbecue gone wrong. The T25C was engineered by the Brutes as a weapon intended to be held in one hand by a standard Brute soldier. Though its size and weight means it must be carried with two hands for use by human infantry, the weapon's weight also has an effect of reducing its recoil. Double kill. The trademarks on the gun are rather simplistic yet unique. I assume these are brute specific symbols located at the top of the gun, near the rear sights, and one at the front, near the lower barrel. The T25C features a small blade located at the bottom of the grip, a wrapped up grip along with a ring style trigger and handguard, a small yet thick drum mag, these magazines also act as power supplies for the weapon, and a couple of huge twin bayonets which are also made of tungsten alloy along with the small bottom blade. These bayonets are intended for puncturing, dismembering, and capable of clean severing a human arm. These blades are also effective as psychological tool against anyone unfortunate enough to go against brutes. Unlike some Covenant Plaza weapons, the T25C actually features sights. Well, the rear sights are obvious, the front post is actually not aligned correctly, so you kind of have to look down a little to see the front post, but at least Pegasus Workshop has some half-assed working brains over there. You'd think being big dumb gorillas, they wouldn't give a shit about accuracy. But hey, Pegasus Workshop might actually be smarter than Iru Iru Armory. Now for in-game stats, the T25C holds 40 rounds of the drum mag, plus 120 extra spare rounds. The average fire rate I got was around 475 rounds per minute. Reload speed I got was around 1.18 seconds. Surprisingly, there is no tactical reload speed for this gun. Max effective range is 18.45 meters. 
The damage output is 5 shots to break shields and 13 shots to health, totaling an 18 shot kill. And lastly, the TTK I got was around 2.12 seconds. One more extra weird quirk about this weapon is that depending on the distance, you can shoot around walls or floors, and the projectiles will bounce depending on the distance. And that's about it. That's everything you need to know about the Spiker in Halo Reach. As far as how I feel about it, well, it's disappointing. Much like the Plasma Rifle, the Spiker was just added in Halo Reach just to give the Brutes their signature gun in the campaign, and serves no real purpose in multiplayer. That's probably why Bungie never included the Plasma Rifle or Spiker in any multiplayer map. Both weapons are very similar in this game. Surprisingly, the Spiker is actually somewhat worse than the Plasma Rifle. TTK is slightly longer, and it takes a couple more shots to kill than the Plasma Rifle. Rate of Fire, honestly, they're both more or less the same. The only advantages the Spiker has over the Plasma Rifle is the Spiker has the extended magazine and has a faster reload speed than the Plasma Rifle's cooldown speed. At the end of the day though, you might as well treat them both like Plasma Weapons. Shoot at the opponent until the shield breaks, and then switch to the other weapon and kill them. Well, that's about sums up this analysis on Halo Reach's Spiker. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe if you want to stick around, and let me know your thoughts on Halo Reach's Spiker. And until next time, peace. Strike!